Hi everybody, welcome to this micro lecture on chronic disease and diet, specifically cardiovascular disease. I'm Dr. Johnson and this particular topic is very fascinating to me as a previous clinical dietitian, understanding how nutrition can play a huge role in not only preventing chronic disease, but also slowing the progression of chronic disease, which is this arena called medical nutrition therapy. By the end of this series, I'm hoping that you'll have a better understanding of cardiovascular disease, which is CVD, diabetes, both type 1 and type 2, renal disease, which is your kidneys, and then cancer, and understanding how the foods that we select can delay the progression of these specific chronic diseases and how nutrition influences um, these other conditions within clinical nutrition. The focus, of course, is to understand how nutrition can increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, which is abbreviated as CVD. To give a little bit of a background on what that encompasses with CVD, we're going to be looking at primarily atherosclerosis, which is the hardening of the blood vessels, specifically due to high cholesterol and that increase of LDL, and hypertension, which is just high blood pressure, and then CVA, which is stroke, which has to do with your brain. Nutritionally, we can impact these three areas of cardiovascular health pretty significantly. Now, this is a picture of a heart attack where you can see this particular muscle in this region has completely died, and that is due to this blood clot here. Now, as a recall, we can review cholesterol. And we have our good cholesterol, which is HDL, which we want a lot of, and our bad cholesterol, which is LDL, which we want to limit. However, it is important to have some LDL because it's necessary for a couple other functions as previously discussed. Again, the development is as we increase LDL here, we're going to increase the amount of plaque buildup specifically oops um, specifically in the blood vessels <clears throat> so you can see here this is the normal average flow so i like to think about a freeway a five lane freeway with 100 200 cars driving and then as we get that plaque buildup, we get down to one lane on that highway but the same amount of cars are trying to get through ultimately what happens is this gets blocked off and there's no more blood flow, which means you then have a heart attack or a stroke, okay? Now, HDL is the good guy. He can come in here and he can actually clean this up and can remove some of that plaque buildup. So let's specifically look at the types of fat. And here we can look at trans fat, saturated fat, and unsaturated fat. Now these are color coded specifically because trans fat, we want to completely eliminate from our diets and have zero grams of trans fat. Reasons for that is because it increases our bad cholesterol and it decreases our good cholesterol. So this is a really bad thing for our heart health, which is why the FDA has completely ruled out that we need to remove all trans fat in our food system. Saturated fat is yellow because we should have it in moderation. So less than 10% of our total calories should be coming from saturated fat. And that is a American Dietary Guideline of the 2015-2020 and that's because it increases our bad cholesterol. It has no effect on our good cholesterol, which is why we just wanna be mindful and moderate the amount of saturated fat in our diet. Now, unsaturated fat is a really good thing, so we wanna focus on increasing the amount of unsaturated fats in our diet because it decreases our bad cholesterol and there's a slight increase in our good cholesterol. Now, there are some studies that show an increase in EPA and DHA, which are those healthy omega-3s that are found in fatty fish, might have a slight increase to total cholesterol. 
And there are some hypotheses there as to because it increases our HDL, um, that is why it increases our total cholesterol. But the health benefits of consuming high amounts of EPA and DHA far exceed the risk of increasing the total cholesterol because there's a whole other host of healthy benefits of increasing EPA and DHA. There's one other nutrient that we can help really significantly decrease bad cholesterol, and that is soluble fiber. So soluble fiber are found in things like oats, beans, and a lot of other just plain fruits and vegetables. Now, the mechanism of action on how this helps to decrease cholesterol is that you can see here, this little, what looks like Pac-Man here is your uh, fiber. And then this little green dot is your cholesterol. So as we are digesting that food here, um, it basically combines and the cholesterol basically gets attached to that fiber. And then what does fiber do for us? Fiber helps us go to the bathroom. So it gets excreted in the stools. So by increasing the amount of fiber, that cholesterol binds to the fiber and then we excrete it in our stools. This is a cardiac diet that you might see in a clinical setting. Um, if a patient is recently diagnosed or has a history of any of these conditions with cardiovascular disease, they will most likely be prescribed a cardiac diet. MI is myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack. Cardiovascular disease is CVD. Cerebral vascular accident is a stroke. CHF is congestive heart failure or coronary heart failure. And then CHD is coronary heart disease. So any patient with these conditions, whether they're newly diagnosed or a previous history, will be placed on the cardiac diet. The cardiac diet consists of less than 7% saturated fat, zero grams of trans fat. They have no caffeine, so that means sadly, decaf coffee and they're most likely put on a sodium restriction of less than 1500 milligrams of sodium.